Hey, how's it going everybody? Sarasota Tim coming to you from Texas on my way to Childress, Texas, eventually to Dallas. And I'm coming to a little town right here on the 287 southbound. I just came off the 40 a while back in Amarillo uh, where I had lunch. And GPS has taken me where I said three times already I would never go again. I would, I would drive as far as it took. <laughs> to go around Dallas and then here I am going to Dallas again so not to see the uh, eclipse and it's now local time is uh, heck I don't know let me see um, I couldn't tell you my GPS has got my Apple CarPlay going it doesn't give the time isn't that something? Well, it's uh, in the afternoon after lunch. How about that? My watch says 10 after 1. I guess that's probably accurate. Could be after 2 because I lost an hour and I haven't set my watch. Probably is. So anyway, uh, not going to be staying here for the eclipse. It's about three days before. I'm trying to get through this and out of here before um, all these people come. It's beautiful right now, but they're saying clouds and rain and won't be able to see it, and the world's gonna end, and the aliens are coming, and no gas and everything. So before the aliens get here, and while they're still selling gas for $2.99 a gallon, I'm moving on through, heading on down to uh, uh, Jacksonville, that is exactly 10 hours. No, that's exactly 17 hours and 49 minutes or 1,251 miles. Excuse me, I was just taking a swallow of my Diet Coke. First couple I've had in a while, I'm trying to stay speeded up a little bit. I had to pull over and take a nap about an hour ago for about 20 minutes, maybe only 15 minutes. But once you get tired, if you don't do that, you'll never beat it, so you gotta pull over. And now um, I'm good. I topped the tank off. I'm full of gas. Ha <laughs> ha, full of gas. Beautiful out here, isn't it? Uh, it's a lot more hilly right now than what it was. You ever heard of Childress, Texas? I'm sure you have. That's where I'm uh, coming up on eventually. I keep running through these little towns and it's a 75 mile an hour speed zone, but your average really goes down when you have to slow down to 35 going through these towns. They're, they're only a one or two red light town. Man, that engine's screaming. I'm having a good time, and since I'm this early uh, ahead of that eclipse, there's no way I'm going to sit here for three days and wait, so I'm going to be home by then, and it'll be good to get there to check on everything. I've got product coming, a couple collaborations that uh, I've got to do some reviews on some things they're sending me. I've got to get down to Boynton and do some woodwork on a deck. I got a dermatology deal. I got an eye doctor deal. I got deals. But you know what? I don't like it. It's like a, a ball and chain. It's, it's like a prison job. It's always somebody waiting on you and expecting you. I got to cut all ties after this time down there. Hopefully, I'm good for another three months before I need to see that doctor. And I'll have everything transferred to Jacksonville by then. But I, I just want to go and not have to turn around and come back. I could have stayed out west. I could have went to Oregon, Washington, Canada, Alaska, up in the northern California, see the redwoods. It's a pretty uh, army green Tacoma right there. 
That's all I need to pull this teardrop. But um, I'll do I'll do something. Uh, my phone's already getting overheated from the sun up there. It's 88 degrees. I haven't seen these temperatures since Florida. <clears throat> of course, that Laughlin and Bullhead City, they'll be warming up. It's only in the 70s. What's today? Friday or Saturday? I forget, but they got an air show there in uh, Bullhead City that Isaac's checking out. And then he's going to go on, I think, uh, to see those big redwoods up in Northern California before he moseys back to Colorado. And I, I don't know where I'm going to go after uh, I see the doctor. I might, it's going to be warmer in the north. I might go up to the northeast, see what's going on up there. I've never been north of uh, North Carolina. We'll see. But uh, whatever I do, it'll be dragging this little teardrop. That is the most awesome little thing to have. I mean, I'm I'm driving as slow and as fast as I want to because every time I get out and look at the gas and I. I knock wood right now and thank God that everything is good. But those tires on there, I, I would replace those tires with the same ones. Those highway tires, uh, they're uh, 14s, not 15s also. I'll just keep rolling with those because they, they trailer good. I don't need to go off-road. I don't need those off-road tires. And the truck is already due for a service every time I start it. Uh, on the front here it says maintenance required see dealer I guess that indicates I need an oil change man these semis can really run I'm trying to stay ahead of them that big diesel they can go so I'll be uh, servicing the uh, truck again at a different Toyota dealer. I will not be going to that last one that wanted to sell me $1,500 worth of services uh, with an oil change. But I probably will use, well, maybe I'll just use Walmart. If Walmart ain't got it, I don't need it. I'll just get the oil change there. They got a filter. These Tundras have been around for years. They know how to do it. I'll get the tires rotated. I'll be ready to go again. And if they don't know how to reset the uh, the maintenance thing on there, I do. In fact, I might even reset it before I get back to Florida because I get tired of looking at it every time I uh, start the truck back up. What do you think? Some cows. It looks like sheep over there. Probably cows, though. This is Texas. The big, it looks big, doesn't it? It's just so much land in Texas. Don't mess with Texas. Gas prices are cheap. A guy back in Amarillo told me that all the Californians and all the people that moved here from, I guess, California, all went to Austin and Dallas, Fort Worth. They don't have too many people from other country, other states in Amarillo. It's pretty much locals. But then again, there's not much to do there. I was going to continue on and go into Oklahoma and shoot down out of Memphis or something. I, I had a couple of routes to choose from, but uh, the shortest route always does this. Out of Amarillo, you get to 287 right into Dallas. Dallas is the largest place I've ever seen in my life. It just doesn't end. You drive and drive and freeway after freeway and construction after construction and traffic and they're flying. I've been through there twice on my Harley and uh, twice with the uh, Forerunner. And now with this, it's like my fifth time. Well, you 
got to be tough. Let's see, I got 4,469 miles I've traveled since I left Jacksonville. With 1,200 to go. And that's before I go to Boynton. And it says I'm getting 10.8 miles per gallon. Earlier it said 13. Once it said 14. I would never, ever live here in this part of Texas. The wind doesn't stop. I mean, you think a hurricane's strong? You fight to get out of your door at the gas station. I mean, it's annoying. You cannot open your door. You're standing out there, it's knocking you over. You're, if you're a woman and you got a hairdo, I feel sorry for you. You wear a hat, <laughs> you're not wearing it long, and it just doesn't stop. It just stays sustained. Every time I've been through here, it's been windy like that. There's nothing to stop it, see? It's just all open. Open land. You don't see any litter on the road, though. <laughs> hey, those cows out there. Steak burgers. Look at all the different people, how they live, you know? They got ranches out here, farms. Then you got the city folk. People living in the mountains. People living on the ocean. Earlier I was thinking about talking about moving to, uh, here we go, we gotta slow down again. Coming into another little two red light town. I was thinking about cashing out everything. Moving to the Philippines. And it doesn't get any more than a fleeing thought this guy here, he's going to wait till he gets there to slow down. But a man could go there and live large. Really large. I don't know how large you can live if it's just Social Security. If you don't have any kind of pension or savings. Now, if your Social Security is a good amount, you can but if you got like, you know, a low Social Security, you're like, oh, I can't afford to live in the United States, so I'm going to go to the Philippines. You can get by probably, but not much more. Because even there, uh, since I was watching videos about that place, look at this road. It sounds like, like I'm riding a horse. Um it's really gone up. Things have gone up since the pandemic. Pilot gas station, 303. See this semi right here? He's the guy that was speeding. Look at him now. He's just sitting right here at the red light. I don't get these people. Oh, Childress Inn. We must be in Childress, Texas. There's Dollar Tree. It's like a California style burrito. Right there is Mexican food, California style. But I can't eat anymore. <laughs> Here's tractor supply. Here's tractor supply. Go get you some boots. No clutch braking, buddy. They got signs that say don't do that. Where's there a... Uh, Boot barn, that's what I need. I got a couple reward dollars. Looking for a vest. Looking for a bathing suit right now, 86 degrees. I'm wearing mine, actually. I got my board shorts on, my reef flip flops, and a t shirt. I'm ready for Boynton Beach. There won't be any jeans and boots and cowboy hats down there. Uh uh. All that'll be in storage until I'm out of there again. It's so funny. I woke up this morning to 37 degrees at a rest area in New Mexico. Now I'm in Childress, Texas. 
it's 87 degrees. The terrain has changed. The people have changed. The Mexican food changed big time. You know, another thing I noticed, I, when I went through these little towns, the last time I crossed country, and the last time wasn't that long ago, it was when I had my forerunner. I came twice to Moab within a month and a half. And all these little towns were smaller. While a lot of this stuff has been here for years, you can tell, they seem bigger though. It seems like the, ever, that was prior to the pandemic, I guess. Well, it was right after. I had a 21 Forerunner. I bought it in 20. But anyway, look at this old motorhome here. Look at this thing. <laughs> what in the heck? Looks like an old Airstream. Um, everything has grown. All these uh, New York investors have come in and bought everything up and started building. I don't remember Childress being this big. I guess it is. Most of these little towns I've gone through so far, they were two red lights. It says I got another 108 miles on this 287 I'm on before my next turn. What is today? Is it Friday? Am I going to hit 5 o'clock traffic in Dallas? Am I doing it to myself again? Is it Friday? Let me see. Oh, let's see. I think it is. I think it is. And that's going to be a problem. Oh. Well, figure it out. Because it'll be like this speed for 50 miles. You guys ever heard of a Conoco gas station? Oh, my arm's getting tired holding this phone. Let me put it back up. And I'll end it here after we get... I think we're about through this town. I just finished that Diet Coke. Well, I took a, a sprayer at a self-serve car wash and I sprayed off the truck and the camper. And now I have spots everywhere <clears throat> because I didn't dry it. I mean, it looks awful. I'll put a mojo on both of them at Ted and Jolene's. I'll get my wax out. I'll pick everything up in Jacksonville and I'll drop some things off. I'll reload and take some things that I don't have and drop off a bunch of stuff I don't need. But I guess I'm gonna keep my place in Jacksonville as my home base because I'm paying as much or as little without splitting hairs as I would anywhere. And it's already sitting there. I just can't imagine towing it somewhere across the country and then coming back for this thing. So that'll be my home base. I'll stay being a Floridian and uh, just go from there. Go, go, go like you've never gone before and just keep crushing it.